and we're live. <clears throat> uh, I'm I'm just gonna get right into the beer because right I'm thirsty there. and I'm just been these 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 puppies are starting to sweat. Okay, <laughs> so let's just let's just get right into it. What we're drinking today? Uh, I'll go first. Mm -hmm. This is the Lagunitas Hazy Wonder, um, and there's actually. Oh, okay. Here's the, here it is. I thought it was only, there's a cold read. I thought it was only on the box. Um, you know what? <laughs> How about we do this? All right. So this is the Lagunitas Hazy Wonder. And there's a cold read. And without further ado, Obi, take it away. <clears throat> when a brilliant idea strikes, why do they say a light bulb goes off and Ding. not on? Hmm. The difference between a spark of genius and a flash in the pan really just comes down to think or whim. But how can something so hazy be so bright? Life is uncertain. Don't sip. Hazy wonder embodies our endless fascination with hot forward brewing, expressed in a bright and unfiltered light. Let us know what you think. 707-769-4495. They literally put their phone number on there for you to give your opinions. Mm -hmm. Good job. And what are you drinking? <sighs> getting ready for the judgment. <laughs> I'm just getting ready for it. Just, so, just let us know. I, uh, I couldn't make it out to a local brewery, but I was at least able to find a Florida quote-unquote craft product. I won't say beer because it's a seltzer. Mm. Boo. Uh, I, know, I know. This one's from Funky Buddha Brewing, though. Yeah. It, it's their premium hard seltzer brewed Boo. from cane sugar and agave with natural flavors added. So they actually have a variety pack, and I have all four of them to <laughs> give a little taste test. Uh, we have the Juicy Blood Orange, the uh, Pink Grapefruit, the... Key lime, cherry, and then finally the mango guava. So I'm going to take at least a hefty sippy sip of each one of these and let you guys know what I think by the end of it. All right. I'll be sleeping by the end of it too. <laughs> <coughs> ah, they're only 4.5%. I can't. Ah. <laughs> well, the man with the voice that would narrate your life is Adam Obesius Rodriguez. Sup, Bruce And I... I'm your faithful co-host, Marco Dupa. And this is episode 275 of the One Beer In Podcast. So, episode 275 of the One Baron Podcast, the podcast where two brews crack open a brew and see where that one brew takes us. We're still recording on uh, Zoom, posting it to our YouTube page. So, like, share, and subscribe everywhere um, that you listen to podcasts and, uh, and, and watch the YouTube page. You see our lovely faces. Adam's back with another uh, fantastic shirt. Thank you. To really crush them with it. I think mine, my tile is, is going to be very um, monochromatic of just mm -hmm. blacks and grays. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how I feel about it, <clears throat> but most of my clothes are still in bags and boxes. So I pulled out essentials that I thought I was going to need for like a couple weeks and ended up becoming my wardrobe for the past two or three <laughs> months. So just to hand wash them. Yeah, so that's that's what's going on with me, man. Nice, nice, mm. nice. Ah, so yeah, what's up? What's up, Ruski? You know, the same old same. Yeah, I'm getting real tired of the Zoom stuff. But yeah, I'm getting sick of it too. Yeah. Um, we didn't. I didn't. I didn't get the my test results back yet, and this will be. Well, hell, 
week five? Something like that, yeah. Um, and, you know, again, just trying to, just trying to play it safe because at this point, you know, if you didn't, if I didn't know any better, I, 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 like it's a, it's a distant future, or diff, distant past now of, of having to deal with coronavirus. <coughs> coronavirus! I'll get those drops back soon. Thank you. Dealing with the coronavirus on a personal level is distant past. And, uh, and, 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 and yet, still, it prevails. Mm-hmm. <sighs> and so... Um, Here we are. <laughs> just consuming, just consuming media and whatnot. <clears throat> you know, uh, I think last, last week we talked about Ghost of Tsushima. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up beating the main story. Did you? Already? I did. Yeah, I did. I got, uh, I mean, there's still, I still got a lot of question marks, like places that I need to discover. But at this point, I mean, I don't know for sure, but they have to just be pillars of honor and, and um, uh, Fox dens and stuff, yeah. which, you know, I didn't need them to beat the story. So it's all cosmetic stuff now. Yeah. So very briefly, uh, overall impressions without going to a spoiler cast because I saw yeah that. okay yeah um, it's uh, the, the, the narrative is a classic classic tale of, of you know honor dishonor you know redemption and things of that nature for, for certain characters and um, I think overall they do a really good job. I read a review where the reviewer was like, it's so unoriginal and uh, I've seen it before. And, you know, a guy recruits a ragtag team of misfits to battle a blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, all right, man, chill (laughs) chill out. Okay. But it works for a reason. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not this wholly original idea, but at the same time, it's a game about samurais. You know, it's not an original take on Samurais either. It's just a, uh, it's just a compelling story. Like, I, I don't know. I thought narrative wise, I thought it was good. I mean, I agree. It's not like incredibly original, but I don't think that that's a huge takeaway from it. And, um, you know, combat's dope. Gameplay's dope. Game looks beautiful. I honestly, there's a lot of games where you can fast travel. Yeah, because these these games are getting so big now. It's just like, I mean, you're literally walking kilometers, and you're like, I I, I don't want to actually walk that far. <laughs> like, I just want to play the game. It's walking to your mission, right? Yeah. So, I mean, admittedly, I did fast travel around some of the map just because I was like, I need, I just want to get this done because I want to go to bed because it's four in the morning. Yeah. But for the most part, I just jump on your horse and fucking ride, man. You know, just ride. Just wait till you encounter somebody or something. It just, it, it does a really good job of, you know, making that worth it. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like Spider-Man does a decent job of that, but in a more video gamey way, you know, of, you know, collecting the backpacks and, you know, uh, doing all of Harry's, um, Tests. yeah, <clears throat> those things. But, the problem with games like this in general is the repetition. Yeah. After a while, you're just doing the same thing. And you're, you're just painting the horse a new color. Not literally. <laughs> not the actual horse in the game. But, you know, and, and I think that's the fatal flaw of any of these games, right? The big, huge open world or open map sand, sandbox game with a bunch of side quests and stuff after a while, it's like, there's no way that every single side quest is going to be an original thing because how can it be? Well, talk to Witcher three. That's true. I say touche (laughs) to you, sir. I say touche. Yeah. A lot of people forget that. Yeah. That that was the thing. Yeah. You're right. Um, There, most of those side quests are wholly original. Yeah. But I think the basic structure of them is kind of the same where, you go in and you kill this thing right. or, or they give you a choice where like, are you, are you going to kill that thing? 
you don't have to kill that thing. But then again, if you don't kill that thing, then it might kill somebody later. Right. But if you kill it now, you might not get as much money and you need that money. So I like that. That's a smart idea. Yeah. Yeah. And and just the ramifications of of your actions in those missions is is really cool. Yeah. Uh, That I'd like to see more of in in those games. But obviously, huge undertaking to do that. Well, uh, state of play was today. And um, we'll, uh, we'll talk about the highlights next week. At that point, you know, yeah, it'll be well Either digested. Really paying attention. No, nah. so no. Nah. Yeah. I heard. I, I I haven't heard anything. You know, world crushing. Oh, yeah, have you played? Um, Twitter, so. have you played? Uh, Fall Guys. Of course, I have. You have? Yes. I, I, we're, so, did you encounter any of the server issues that they've been having? A little bit. I, I had a couple. Like one time, I was trying to play and about. Three times I got a network issue, mm-hmm. um, but then after that, I only had the issue maybe one other time. You want to explain it? Explain it a little bit. The game and uh, yeah, the game itself is. It reminds me a lot of um, uh, what was that? The, the PC game we used to play, the wrestlers, the gang beasts, gang beasts, right? Yeah. yeah, it's it's really similar to gang beasts in in its simplicity and kind of the wonky uh, physics. But you're playing this like little cute character they call it a bean you're playing a little bean Mm -hmm. um and it's a they they sell it as uh basically a game show it's like a obstacle course that you're trying to get through until you become the ultimate winner at the end um and it's about 60 players total that whittles down to to one ultimate winner Uh, but there are different courses i'm not sure how many but they're all I have different mechanics and different uh, layouts and some of them are like team based where you have to work together with your team. Other ones are just everyone for themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's all sort of a racing mechanic generally where you have to get to the end before anyone else does. So, I mean, it's, it's colorful, it's cute, it's fun. Uh, It's free on PlayStation plus for the first month. Um, Yeah. And and yeah, I mean, I recommend it. I I think it's, it's really fun. Really frustrating because (coughs) everyone, jumps into you and <laughs> tries to mess you up yeah but it's just a lot of fun yeah yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna get that that look it just looked like a fun little thing to pass the time it really is i i'd like to play with friends too i think that had a fun element to it i've seen some people streaming um are you hiding from yeah i was yeah. <laughs> sorry it's fine it's fine sorry sorry uh but yeah no it's a good time Check it out. If I'll try to convince, one, especially try to convince the guys to um, put Warzone down to play Fall <laughs> Guys. <laughs> Do you see that Warzone's going to have integration with uh, Call of Duty? Uh, what's the new one? Uh, Call of Duty. I think Cold it's War. in Vietnam. Cold War. Yeah. Oh, it's Cold War. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. That looks. Yeah. That's. Oh yes, yes, I did. Never mind. I'm lying. But that's. Um, so the game's going to come out and what you'll just, they'll, they'll, they'll obviously be a huge update to Warzone. Well, cause Warzone is their separate thing now Yeah, where they're, where they're saying like, this is going to be its standalone thing. So we can continue to release call of duties and not have to worry about a battle Royale every time we put a game out. Right. So yeah, that's, that's such a smart idea there. I mean, Sometimes, you know, these AAA titles, or these AAA developers, you're like, how can you, uh, you, how are you guys even running a business? You make such bad decisions. And then sometimes you're like, there you go. Yep. That's hey, it. you nailed it. That's, that's what you're supposed to do. Yep. Smart, smart of them to do that. Yep. So that'll be. It's its own platform now. So, yeah. it's, you know, anyone can pick it up and play and not necessarily, they don't have to get through that barrier of entry for the new uh call of duty every single year yeah um and then also they don't have to worry about developing an entire new thing when people already enjoy it right yeah they just put out a new big update where they opened up some parts of the map and stuff and Mm -hmm. i mean that's 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 all you really have to do is slow drip content to your fan base Mm -hmm. i mean it's you know i always cite overwatch because blizzard is just 
I mean, they, they, they've been near flawless in their execution when it comes to replay vid- replayability of Overwatch. They've been almost perfect. I mean, there's obviously been, there's been their issues and there've been their controversies and whatnot, but when you take it on the whole, take it in the whole, mm-hmm. yeah. it, it, I mean, like, I just, I can't, I can't think of a better, uh, I shouldn't say better, but a more consistent um, rollout of new content for a, for a game, you know? Yeah. Just, and, and, and I just think every, every studio should be taking a page out of their book where it's like, just, you know, just give, just, just give them a little bit here and there, you know, new skins, new map, make sure you're balancing the game continuously you know, treat it like a living, breathing thing that you have to take care of. Mm-hmm. Don't just abandon it. Yeah. You know, don't, I mean, Blackout, the reason Blackout sucked after a while was because, I mean, it took them, it took them like eight months to do anything significant in the game. And by that point, everyone was done with it. By the time they put all this new shit in there with the new modes and, and the new modes were fun. They were fun. And it was like, but it was too late. It just took too long to get there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's too bad. That's too damn bad, boy. It's too damn bad. They figured it out. Mm -hmm. They're doing better, moving forward. You got to make those mistakes, you know. You got to crack a couple eggs to make an omelet. That's life, baby. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, what have you? What else you been playing? Ghost of Tsushima. I mean, that's been my main focus. I've been playing a little bit of Animal Crossing too, just to decompress. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's been it. Oh, I, I jumped back into my VR. Oh, okay. So I've been playing Beat Saber, which is incredible. Beat Saber is awesome. Uh, yeah. Playing more of that. Um, that, uh, I forget the name of it, but the, the one where you're playing basically like a Guy Ritchie movie, um, based on the London, London heist VR. Experience. Oh, I don't, I don't, I know what you, I know what you're talking about. You said I'd like yeah. it, but I haven't, I haven't played it. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. yeah, it's really cool. Um, but yeah, and besides that, nothing really. Um, I will shout out uh, Shutter, the streaming service for their movie um, Host, which I talked about on Twitter. Yeah, uh, really, really cool. Worth it to just try out the Shutter app, even because it's it's only about an hour long, super quick in and out. Really? Movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really short, really concise. It's like against the rules. I, there's, there's no rules. <laughs> there's no rules. Uh, but yeah, it's super super short. There's no fat on that movie at all. It gets gets right to the point, right to the good stuff. And really, really cool. The entire thing is um, based around um, Zoom, actually. It's a horror movie in a Zoom chat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm kind of doing the same in my frame. I'm like, no. uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's really, really cool, really effective, especially, um, you know, in this day and age. I wonder how it's going to age, you know, based on yeah. hopefully we don't always have to Zoom call our friends. Um, yeah. But um, for right now, it's like it, it's it's surprisingly uh, cathartic to see characters in a quarantine scenario. Yeah. Uh, and also in a horror movie. Um, so yeah, highly recommend it. Yeah, I mean, Two thumbs. you uh, you tweeted that, and then literally every person who worked on that movie fucking liked that tweet. <laughs> I know, I know. Which is That's very cool. cool. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, you don't sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you're not. You do say something to kind of throw it into the air and see who catches it, but most of the time, you know, we're just having a conversation. Like with that, it had nothing yeah. to do with, you know. You weren't trying to, and we're just having a conversation about content and media that in, in the age of, of, of Corona. Right. And just happened to shout them out. And then, and then fucking the director, the EP, the writer. I was like, who yeah. are these people who are liking this tweet? You. I had to keep looking at all their profiles. It's like, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it yeah. was super, super cool. Um, yeah. that they're that active online. And I mean, yeah, I, I, I can't say enough about it. I think it's, it's a really, really interesting concept and really, really cool and really effective and really scary. Yeah. Um, so check it out. All right. All right. I've been thinking about getting shutter. So I love it. 
I, I really can't say enough good about it. Oh, I was going to ask you, do they have, um, so they have a bunch of new and indie stuff on there. Do they have a bunch of classics on there or how, how does, how does it work? There's essentially a rotating list of classic movies that they kind of go in and out of. Mm. So you, it's not a uh, comprehensive list of like, I'll definitely find, you know, all the Friday the 13th movies on there Yeah, or anything like that. But I mean, they have a lot of like old school 70s, 80s slasher flicks, um, a lot of foreign uh, horror movies, which is cool. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a pretty varied list, I'll, I'll say that. And it changes out pretty often enough for you to find something new all the time. And, they, and again, they have a lot of their original content now, too. Mm. Um, that's turning out pretty good. <coughs> I hear right. things about um, this new take on La Llorona. Uh, that ghost story uh, that apparently this one is, is actually really, really good and has like some uh, some meat to the bones of, of the story that has more to do with like uh, history and oppression and, and deeper themes than just a peekaboo ghoul fest, you know? Mm. So I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, and th- another cool thing about that app is there's a specific area that you can go to you click on it and it showing movies like it's a tv channel <sighs> and it's just an endless channel of movies that you don't because you know one of the main things that it has been an issue for especially you know our generation and older is that streaming apps are great because they give you all the options in the world but sometimes it's just hard to figure out what you want to watch yeah so this takes that out of the equation and you just hit that and you're now on the shutter channel yeah and they just have queued up movies and you can just turn that on and just start watching that's a very interesting idea yeah i love it i think it's great i mean it, whenever i'm not sure what to watch if i'll i see what's on there click it and just jump in for the first 15 and see how it is and keep going if i like it yeah all right i can dig that that sounds like an app that uh you know it's they're they're trying to they're trying to do something new and interesting and fun. I, I I appreciate the effort that it sounds like they're putting in. Yeah. So. Yep. We'll I'd see. Recommend it. We'll see. We'll see. Check it out. <clears throat> I've I have been going back and watching a bunch of stuff that I didn't watch when I was when I was supposed to, I guess. Okay. Yep. So now it's no longer in the zeitgeist and nobody gives a shit. But uh I've been going back and watching all of the Netflix Marvel shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, Super I jumped. Relevant. <laughs> I, know, right? <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why I'm doing it, but something the other day I was just like, I was just on Netflix and, and I was like, I don't want a new show to watch. I'm not going to try to discover something. And uh, you know, I was just, eh, let's just see what, let's see if this, See if Punisher's good. Okay. Not that I already watched the first season. I knew it was good, but I was like, let's see if they were able to keep it good. Mm-hmm. So I just watched all of season two in two days. And then I was, I finished that and I was like, well, I never finished Daredevil. I stopped after the second season. So I watched all of season three mm-hmm. uh, over the course of like a day and a half. And let me just say that, uh, they probably should have canceled those shows. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, oh, no. I'm, I am, I'm not that, I'm not that impressed. I'm not that blown okay. away by these shows. All right. Tell me why. Please I, justify this. I, so Punisher season two. I don't think it's that good. I just don't think it's that good. I'm just, I was just disappointed by it after a while. It was just like, you know, just fucking kill him already. I'm, I'm done with this. Like, how many episodes are we going to play cat and mouse with this guy? It's not even interesting anymore. Kill someone. Yeah. Someone die. No one died until the end. And Typical then it was like, American. yeah, just kill him. <laughs> sp- sp- uh, spoilers ahead. Because I, I need to get for, this for off the my entire, chest. For the entire uh, Netflix Marvel span. Let's say yeah. spo- blanket spoilers on all of that. Hopefully you have... You d- you didn't do what I did. You've had and, more than enough time. Yeah, so that that's that. on you. Um, 
but uh but billy russo jigsaw i mean the whole thing with his his entire like after it it started off really interesting him not being able to remember what's going on but uh punisher still hating him and uh uh detective uh, dina madani hating him and everyone still ha- harboring those feelings about hi- about billy and then billy being this innocent guy who's like dude i don't know what i right. did to you for you to that hate me so me. much i loved it because they 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 give him insomnia up to the point where he was still friends with with like punisher's his best friend i don't think that's and, insomnia marco or, or not insomnia <laughs> fuck uh, uh um <laughs> Amnesia. He just keeps falling asleep. Amnesia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy can't stay up. Just can't. Every time he falls asleep, it's like memento. He wakes up and he's like, "I don't know what. I don't know what's going on. What happened?" <laughs> so, uh, yeah, amnesia, mm-hmm. up to the point where he's still best friends with Frank, and uh, I just thought that that was a really interesting place to, to, to start from. And kind of, I think that, you know, there was more, there was more meat on the bone to steal your phrase that you just said from that storyline. than they gave it because after a while he just became a criminal again. Yeah. And I, and I understand that they're saying like, you know, no matter what, that's what lives within him. So no matter the situation, yeah. yeah. And I get that. But it just kind of is like, yeah, but we did this already. We spent a season already thinking that he was a good guy. Then it turns out that he's a bad guy. Then they have a brutal blah, blah, blah. We did that already. Yeah. See, and that's the, that's the problem. It's like you're, they're trying to balance telling an interesting story with, with, doing something new and interesting and you can't bring back a character and then try to, you know, throw the okie doke. Mm-hmm. But then at the, at the, it just ends up being the same shit. Yeah. So his whole thing was, it just kind of disappointed me after a while. And it, it's really just a narrative cheat code to have somebody have amnesia. Like, yeah, of course. It, the, the, from, from the very beginning, I was kind of like, we're going to do that. Like we're doing the soap opera, uh, <laughs> narrative that's yeah what, that's the choice we're making right now yeah but um i think you know. that again what is satisfying about it would have been him going if if frank becomes basically the bad guy because he's trying to finish the job yeah and billy's like you know only defending himself mm-hmm. then they kind of turn the tables and you're like, this sick son of a bitch who killed this guy's family is now the innocent one, question right. mark? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would have been more interesting for sure. And that's the thing, too, that makes Punisher so interesting in general. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say grew up, but thankfully. Uh, I, <laughs> I came around to Punisher comics when it was the Max series, and it was all really brutal and gross. Um, and, I mean, within those, even, like, he's not a he's not a good guy like right he's he's a brutal killer and we we accept him only because he has a code and he's killing worse guys you know yeah um so i would have like my my i i guess one regret that w- within most of this entire netflix uh, abandoning ship on all of their Marvel stuff is that by the end of that series, we finally get Frank as the Punisher, right? Yeah. We finally, he is now no yeah. more Frank. He is the Punisher. Yeah. He's, he's accepted. There's no going back and forth between like, am I going to cross the line? Am I not going to cross the line? He's realized like, I have to cross the line to get things done. Nobody right. else can do what I do. I'm a sick fuck Mm -hmm. and I'm going to accept it. Yeah. So I wish we got that acceptance at the beginning of this season. Yes. Got to see him as the Punisher the entire time. Now my regret within that entire thing is if we could have gotten season three, I 
I would have liked to see how they would have handled that for an entire season of, of him being the Punisher. Yeah. You yeah, know, no, it, yeah. Can that be sustained? I don't know. But, you know, I would have liked to see it because yeah. I, I really, I like that per- portrayal of Punisher. I like that portrayal of Frank. And, you know, John Bernthal, obviously, is awesome. Yeah, he's great. So I, I, I really wish we had more time to, to be with that character now that he's finally taken up the reins and become the character that we wanted him to be the entire time. That was the most frustrating thing for me with that entire mm-hmm. series was that, you know, sure, it's interesting for us to have to play with him, like, on crossing the line, you know, uh, who is he really? He doesn't need to be the Punisher, but, you know, can he live just as a, a, a guy? Yeah, that, that doesn't have to you know, stand up for people and and go past that line. But we want him to. Yeah, <laughs> it sucks, but we want him to. Like that's yeah. who he is. That, that's the character we want him to be. So it's kind of unfair to the audience in a way to to play with us that long, and then finally we get that. But then it's like, okay, that's it. Well, and and how many how many characters, especially comic book characters, are there right now that are straight up murderers that we that we root for captain america captain america is is the, probably the number one i'm glad you said that you know i would say that he's the number one murderer and then <laughs> yeah. you know the rest of them but it's like it it is it is a wholly original thing to have a guy like a, the protagonist who's also like you know because all of these fu- Every single one of these goddamn superheroes, they all have the same fucking code. Mm -hmm. This thing where they're like, I don't kill people. It's like, but you beat them half to death. Right. You maim people every day. Yeah. It's like, okay, you don't kill them, but who knows how many people you've sent to the hospital who died eventually or who suffered like life altering wounds from you. And that's the thing that kind of takes you out of it in this day and age. Cause we've seen it so often that trope yeah. of the, the, the superhero who doesn't break his law of ethics, but, but that's the only law. And that's, what's so stupid about it. Right. Once you look at it from a, from, you know, just use your brain for two yeah. seconds. It's like, it doesn't yeah. make sense. And that's what I'm saying is like from an audience in 2020, uh, we're tired of that. And I, I, I think that we also are a bit more aware and won't accept that as, as something we're able to let go of knowing that, you know, Batman's out here like snapping backs and expecting that every single one of those people he knows is going to survive <laughs> for sure. He knows yeah. that. <laughs> right. I, I have just that amount of restraint that I know right. the exact pressure, the PSI I can put on this man's neck <laughs> yeah. before it snaps and he's dead. You know, how like, many how many how many guys has like Daredevil snuck up behind and just fucking <laughs> and then he just puts him on the ground gently and it's like some of those guys didn't wake back up. <laughs> <laughs> you can pretend like they didn't die, but they died. They died. They died. They didn't go Matt, sleepy sleep. They're dead. <laughs> you killed a. You killed a blind, bunch of them. But we can see all the bodies. <laughs> they're piling up, Matthew. God. Yeah. No. It's 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 ridiculous to for us to yeah. just to just accept that. I think it'd be interesting to see a, uh, and I'm sure somebody's written this before, but to see a superhero kind of accept that level of like, people will die. I'm going to try my best not to kill people, but they're going to die. Yeah. You know, like just accepting that is like a bit like the greater good. Yeah. Uh, that sort of thought. I, I think that would be interesting for you to have to <laughs> deal with. Yeah. Yeah. Something that um, it takes a bit of their soul every time they do it, but they know that at the end of the day, this is the only way that it gets done. Like Punisher is different because he's, he's an, he's a psychopath. I mean, he can he, he can call it whatever he killer. wants, let's, but yeah. Let, let's not <laughs> mince words here. He's he's a psychopath. Right. So that's the difference with him, but with somebody who is regretful about what they do and knows that they are crossing that line and they don't want to do it, but they know that that's the only way that things are going to get done. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I mean, that's that I agree. we just that's, talked about him like Matt Murdock. I feel like he's much more of this Catholic guilt-ridden 
uh, superhero <laughs> character for the majority of the time until he snaps into his daredevil mode. And goes but crazy. even then, even then, it's like he doesn't. Even then, his guilt stems not from the people that he's destroying with his bare hands. Mm-hmm. It all stems from you know, I didn't kill him, and I should have. Right. And how many people could I have protected had I killed yeah. him? The, the people he couldn't save yeah. is, is the biggest guilt on him. And, and, and it's like, but it all stems from, I sh- like, I should break that one rule that I have. Mm-hmm. Even though he's done enough damage to people to, I, I truly believe Daredevil has murdered people in that show. There's no way that all of those guys <laughs> were like, remember when Daredevil beat us to within an inch of our lives? Yeah, what a crazy Saturday that was. <laughs> <High five. laughs> We've been reformed by the prison system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy days. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of Daredevil, yeah, I got through the entire season. Season three should have been season two, and season two should have been season three. I, I don't – They season two deals with the hand and Nobu and Elektra – and it's like this global conspiracy and, yeah. and the, the range and, and um, uh, scope. scope is way, way bigger. Season two yeah. or season three goes right back to just Hell's Kitchen yeah, yeah. and dealing I with think, Fisk. I think, I think they bit off a little too much. Oh, yeah. Uh, more than they could chew with season two. Because if I'm not mistaken, that season went right into um, Defenders. Defenders. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So – that if you said you didn't watch defenders right yeah so they give you this recap in the beginning because netflix is doing this cool thing where they they recap their their original series and there were scenes with that i was like no 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 i watched <laughs> season two i know what happened at the end yeah. and then i'm like i'm searching all around for for these clips i'm like this doesn't look familiar why what is this and then i realized yes Season two goes straight into the Defenders, Defenders. and uh, Daredevil is the only show that you need to watch Defenders for mm-hmm. that season to make sense. The rest of these shows, it does Defenders doesn't matter, yeah. but for you get, you get more out of it if you've seen Jessica Jones and the rest. Right, of them. right. Luke so it, yeah, it goes straight into that, and then yeah, I mean the the scope um, it minimizes. It goes right back to just that you know 12 block radius of hell's yeah. kitchen and you know that's a, that's a flaw of the show it was just jarring yeah to know how big the sh- the the their 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 own little cinematic universe got mm-hmm. just for the flagship show to go all right we're dealing with local criminals again let's rein it back in yeah we're dealing with locals we're, we're, we're dealing with local district attorney elections and and crime bosses who who deal in just um uh, protection of other gangs and it was just like yeah it was just like it's so small it just felt so small yeah that's um that's something i feel like the spider-man movies were able to avoid because you know you go from spider-man in uh the avengers and then is he just going to be back in queens yeah like, they didn't do that. They went for a, another global sort of thing, which was yeah. smart on their yeah. behalf. That is smart. I feel like Daredevil is a better story to be told in that smaller, more compact uh, scope, though. Yeah. I think it was, for, for my money, season three was better than two because of that. Yes. No. Yeah. I, yeah. I agree. I agree. They, I, I think they definitely went way too big in season two. And it's like, if you don't have the budget or the ownership of the characters, or if Marvel is not going to shell out, you know, more characters, or Netflix is not going to agree to, if they can't come to some kind of agreement to, you know, throw more of his allies and enemies into it to kind of make it larger, then you scale it back, and that's good. But like I said, again, it, it was just it was just jarring going from season two and all the other shows, and then. You come back and we're dealing. We're we're literally the big bad is Fisk again. It's like I thought we were done with him. I thought he was going to play the Hannibal Lecter thing and be in jail, and then yeah. we'd see him from time to time or whatever. No, he's the big bad again. 
Vanessa. 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 I, I failed you. <laughs> it's like, ah, whatever, you big baby. He's a giant baby. He's That's a big, he giant baby. Yeah. No, they do some interesting stuff in season three. Bullseye is really dope. I mean, there was there was moments where I was like, "Oh man, he's actually gonna kill. He's gonna kill like important characters. Like, yeah. Foggy might eat it or something. Like, something's like a, a, an import an important character is gonna get it yeah. from him." And of course, that didn't happen. But I think I think had, if I think if Netflix or Marvel or whoever is in charge of these shows, I think if they knew that they were coming to an end so soon. They would have done way more interesting things. Yeah. I think that the problem is we're left not knowing because these shows got canceled in the middle of, I mean, you can see it when you watch it there. You can see that their ambitions were way larger and that they were like, we're going to set up some really dope shit that's coming down the pipeline. And then for some executive to walk in and be like, you know, we're putting a kibosh on that. All those characters can eat it. We don't care because we're, we're going bigger and better with this thing. And you have to imagine, like, you know, the showrunners are like, dude, I had <laughs> so many, all these ideas, dude. Yeah, yeah. Especially with Daredevil. Daredevil looked like he was – it looked like they were just getting started with him. Yeah. That's disappointing because he – he, after watching that – because at first I was on the Jessica Jones hype train mm-hmm. saying, like, Jessica Jones is the best show out of all of them. And going back and watching Daredevil, I'm like, nah, he's, he, it's still Daredevil. He's the most interesting. Charlie Cox is the man. Yeah. It's just his struggles are more relatable, more interesting, more grounded. They do more with it. You just relate to him more. Even if you're not a failed religious person or a religious person, you still – have this thing in you that tells you right from wrong. And then you still struggle with that thing. You know, it's obviously not on the same scale, but it's, it's like you can still see yourself in his doubt. Yeah. Which is really interesting. His humble beginnings and the fact that, you know, uh, he is a blind person and grew up without, without that, but kind of hone his skills in another way i think is a inspirational thing that a lot of superheroes don't provide people yeah because they're just super you know yeah there's no real downside to spider-man being spider-man other than the the weight of having to save people yeah but daredevil has that too on top of the fact that he's blind yeah yeah he, he has super hearing and echolocation essentially but <laughs> you know at the same time i think that's a an interesting thing that really differentiates him from any other uh, superhero out there. Most of them anyway. All that being said, all that being said, they still like the writing dips and the acting dude. Some of the, some of the lesser characters that they, it's like they were, they were like, look, we got Charlie Cox. We got John Bernthal. You know, we're good with our main guys. We're not going to spend too much time or energy on the rest of these characters because some of the acting was soap opera level. And I'm not exaggerating. When you go back and watch like season, go back and watch season two of, of Punisher, some of the acting in it is, is borderline offensive. Oh, no. I was watching it and I'm looking around by myself, <laughs> just going, That was the take? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else watching this? You're telling me you went into Video Village and you looked at that take and you were like, good enough. Let's keep Make it rolling. That's all we got. Keep it rolling. We don't have enough time to go back yeah. and the retake Marvel that. The Marvel money's uh, coming to an end, boys. Let's go. <laughs> the well is win. running dry. We, yeah. need to, we need to get this on the books. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's pretty obvious that um, they saw the writing on the walls pretty early um, by those second <laughs> and third seasons. Um, yeah. And we're probably just trying to wrap up what they had because it was too late to have any real, you know, conclusion to this stuff, unfortunately. That's too bad. Um, yeah, really. I mean, it sucks because it showed a lot of promise. And I, I think that even though, like you said, there there were some glaring issues with a lot of the, the series, I feel like it was still an interesting avenue for people hungry for that kind of content. Because what do we have now? 
you know, we're, we're waiting for the Disney versions of their TV, their Marvel TV shows, which have yet to be proven in any way. You know, uh, they've mm-hmm. done well with Mandalorian, which is promising. Mm-hmm. But, you know, as far as something that is a bit more grounded, a bit darker, a bit smaller in scale, I don't know if that's what we're going to get, but, you know, we'll, we'll see. But I, I like a world where there is a, a kind of not Disney friendly version of the Marvel universe out there. Which yeah. is what I'm kind of hoping will come back with the blade movie coming out and, you know, maybe some other opportunities for something a bit on the darker side. That's a little less kid friendly. I'm not saying it has to be, you know, blood and gore rated R uh, type of thing, but you know, it's just, it's nice to, to be able to have characters that can live in that environment because they have them with Marvel. Yeah. It, it's not, I don't know. It's just not uh, playing all of your cards if you don't explore those sides of things, the more adult yeah. stories to be told in the Marvel universe. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're, 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 I think, you know, this is going to sound ridiculous considering the situation, but I think they're leaving money on the table by, not um, fully embracing everything that Marvel has to offer. If Disney's just going to go, you know, we got it. We figured it out. You know, we're going to, we, we <clears throat> will have the, uh, we'll have the strings swell and swell in the score. And then you get a sudden cut away from the camera and you know, that dude just got murdered. <laughs> PG 13. Right. So we need. I- yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, just just let these, let these characters go for it. It would be really, I mean, at least, at least don't try to replace them. I think Charlie Cox is just, he's perfect. He's perfectly cast. He just, yep. I mean, he crushes it, man. He's, he's so good. He's so good. He's the only, I mean, when he's not on screen, I'm just like, where's, where's Daredevil? <laughs> give me daredevil I back, back. <laughs> i only want to watch daredevil yeah no i i think i think the 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 glowing uh stars that came out of that are charlie cox and um john bernthal yes yeah. as, as punisher i think those two you know i i would i'd pay money to see them on the big screen as those yeah. characters 100 percent. i would i would i would go see them in a movie you know what even how about this even better we have a a, a tie-in movie with two of them together yeah you know yeah, uh, do do that series. Make make it a movie about the two of them. Yeah, on a smaller level, make it this like raid level action movie. It'd be awesome. I would I would love it. I love that John Bernthal. He he plays it like you know like he, like a wild animal. It's just like <laughs> he's, he's like. Sing, he's like <laughs> there's one moment in like I think it's the first or second episode where he's fighting. He's fighting in the bar where he first meets the kid, mm-hmm. and um. And and he he kills one guy, and then uh and he's get he tries to get the attention of the other guy that he's about to because the other guy is like on top of the girl and he, I get he's about to try to kill the girl and instead of instead of going hey or stop that he just goes <laughs> <laughs> just barks at the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine you're in a bar fight with a dude and he doesn't go hey fuck you he just goes. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? All right, all right, relax. <laughs> Who barks? A grown man barks at another grown man. <laughs> no, I loved it. I loved. I love the way he played it. I love the brutality yeah. he brought to it. I love the anger he brought to it. He's he's so good. I hated him in um, Walking Dead, and that's how good he was in the show. Because yeah. I hated him. Yeah, Shane's a real son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, he's man. John Bernthal's. He's good, dude. He's, He's great, good. Man. Yeah. So, <clears throat> speaking of of Disney and what what they can do and what they're trying to do, mm-hmm. we just they they just announced. Well, they're they're it's kind of we're trying to, basically getting like a slow drip of information from like these conference calls and shit, and 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 legitimate announcements um, that in the wake of our new normal. As corny as that sounds, everybody's been saying it. Uh, these studios are trying to figure out ways to get these movies out there to people. And, I mean, there was, there was a whole summer slate. I mean, they had, studios were 
were ready to fucking rock and roll with some of these movies. You know, yep. we were going to have a monster summer. Monster summer. Yeah. And now they're trying to <laughs> first recoup their losses. And second, it's like, well, how do we even put these movies out? We can't just hold on to these fucking blockbuster. These movies cost hundreds of millions of dollars to make. Yeah. I mean, and not to mention there, you know, you could say, let's just save them for next season, but there's an entire other slate of movies that are supposed to come out next season. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't just, you can't just shoehorn your mega uh, franchise starter next year. (laughs) So with that in mind, um, Disney Plus, they're go- they're going to experiment with a new way of releasing some of these movies, which is a paywall for, or I sh- I should say a pay tier rather for these for for these blockbuster movies that were supposed to release in theaters. So you have to have the app, <clears throat> and then much Disney in the Plus. much yeah Disney Plus, and and much like. ESPN, the ESPN app and ESPN Plus, you pay for the ESPN Plus app and you get all of this free, well, free. You get all this content right. that's stored on the app and you get access to, you know, different things, different exclusive things that you can't get anywhere else. But then when it comes to like their big events, you have to pay for those on top of paying for the subscription service. So Mulan. Disney's Mulan that was supposed to be this huge movie that they were working on. Fucking massive. Think about the fucking uh, the, 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 the audience that they were going to pull in from China. I mean, China's already oh. China. What they China. do for some of these movies. I mean, we have movies that fucking bomb here. And then they, they ship that shit over to China and they eat that shit up, dude. Mm-hmm. Dwayne Johnson has a career because of China. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. They, they love giant, dumb blockbusters. Yeah. The shit that we, that we, we scoff and we, our nose is at, yeah. they're like, dude, it's just a movie. Yeah. Relax. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so Mulan was going to be... Mulan was going to be, yeah. And not only that, but, you know, somebody brought up the good point that this was the, um, this was the perfect sort of uh, uh, spark of representation for Asian Americans. And yeah. And Asians in general in, in uh, Hollywood. Big time. So, you know, this would have been a big, a big thing for that entire culture. And also Jet Li's in it. I forgot about that. That's great. Yeah. And we would have got to see Jet Li on the big screen again. That just makes me happy. Well, it makes me sad now, but so if you want to watch Mulan first, you get to spend thirty dollars, and you get access to the to the movie. Yeah, thirty dollars gets you the movie. Yeah, it's not right? a rental. It's you not a rental. You get to watch it as many times as you want, as long as you're subscribed to Disney Plus. Ah, and there is. The, the the details that the people know know about know about, <laughs> yeah. and and uh, when we talked about this a little bit, I I said that I was gonna throw some I told you so's in there, mm-hmm. because the last time that we had a conversation pertaining to this, we had our good friend Travis Gomez on the show. And Travis Gomez told me that I was ridiculous for even suggesting. <laughs> that companies would do something like this. I said that Apple's been doing it for years. Yeah. That when you buy something, when you buy an album from them, you don't own that album. Yeah. If I buy a CD, you have to come into my house and take that shit from me, which I would let you do because I'm not fighting over <laughs> CDs. From but, my cold dead hands. <laughs> but if you buy something on iTunes... That's yours as long as you have iTunes yeah. legally. I mean, obviously you can, you can pull it from iTunes and you know, whatever, they can't do anything, but from a legal standpoint, mm-hmm. 
-hmm. It's yours as long as you have iTunes. When you don't have that, a license to play it essentially. Right, exactly. Same thing that Xbox does. Same thing that PlayStation does. You bought the game, but only when you are logged into their thing. Yeah, you are you are paying for the rights to own a thing. Own in heavy question mark or uh, heavy quotation marks. I will say the the notable difference with this is that you don't have to pay for iTunes, right? That's true. So you're paying a monthly subscription or a yearly subscription, depending on your choice. Um, You're paying for that and then also have to pay for the product itself on top. Somebody equated this to like DLC essentially. Yeah. Where, you know, as long as you're, you're paying for the subscription of the thing that you're playing you have that content. So yeah. like a like a massive <laughs> multiplayer online game, right? Mm-hmm. Same deal. You buy a $30 pack that comes with costumes and stuff. Uh, you have that as long as you're paying for the subscription of that game to play yeah. online, right? Yeah. Same deal here. Yeah. You, know, you, you pay your subscription fee and you have access to that thing you bought. Yeah. That's it. That pisses me off so much. It sucks. It's not good. It pisses me off so much. Yeah. I, I <laughs> when I <laughs> it's okay. We, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's gonna be all right. Uh, when you, dude, when I pay for something, it's mine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I don't know. I think that's I think that's how we were raised, right? Oh yeah. I give you hard earned money. You give me the service or product. And it's mine now. We go our separate ways. I never have to see you again. Yeah. I don't have to keep coming to you every month and give you another $30 to keep that thing. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hear me out. What you can do instead of, of getting this thing from the subscription service that you have to keep paying for in order to keep the movie is you could wait probably, <clears throat> I don't know what you think, like eight months, buy it on Blu-ray, keep that forever could do that yeah you could do that i mean Um, maybe this movie will end up streaming on disney plus in two years i don't know dependent yeah yeah i uh, have like lion king on there and that came out last year right you know so i need a justification of the price point Mm -hmm. because it seems like it's pretty obviously just them trying to recoup. Yeah. And that to me is like, look, man, this whole thing is nobody's fault, but it feels like the only people who are paying for this is us yeah. middle to lower class people. It feels like we're the only ones who are paying for this shit. Well, there's like, there's been movies that have come out recently that you've been able to rent that were supposed to be in theaters like they weren't thirty dollars were they they were twenty bucks i think yeah t- yeah that's what i thought was twenty yeah. bucks was the price point but those <clears throat> keep so i think they're trying to add value to it by saying you can watch as many times as you want it's not just that one time thing yeah but okay but if you just wait you get, like you said, the Blu-ray. And the Blu-ray is going to come with special features, bonus content, m- more minutes that weren't added to the movie, a yeah. download code so that you can have it on the go. I, and, and that's still not going to cost you $30. Yeah, but they know that people are of uh, persuasion to want things now. So they know a vast majority of people who want to see this movie are going to shell out that money yeah. to watch it now. They're taking uh, advantage of people. Sure. And that's what businesses do. I know, but it's just like it, it's we're getting to a point where like they're just being so obvious with it, you know? Yeah, I, I mean I'm I'm really disappointed because when I first saw that headline, all I knew was it's gonna be on Disney Plus. And I said, Awesome, I have Disney Plus. <laughs> I'll watch it when it comes out. Flex. <laughs> you know <laughs> mm-hmm. uh but yeah so I, I as soon as i saw that however i went <sighs> it's like yeah of course of course there's yeah. a it's fine. 
I don't know. I just don't. Uh, I just. I just can't see a justification for that price point, except for, look, dude, we're losing money on this deal too. Yeah. And you know, whatever. I'm not. I'm not telling them that like they have to lose money on something just to keep me entertained. But at the same time, it just feels like it's. It feels like shit rolls downhill, and yeah. we're downhill. Yep. And I. I don't That's know. It's just. It's just fucked up. Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna see that movie for years. I'm not spending thirty dollars on that. I'm not I'm not doing it. I wasn't even okay. I liked Mulan, but I wasn't you know, that movie wasn't it wasn't for me. Yeah. Like it's a good movie, but it's the same as you know, I just I said Mulan is a good movie, but it wasn't for me. Is that is that satisfactory? Uh-oh. <laughs> Like you're and you're no, it's it's Hercules, just okay. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, you know, it it's so I was excited to see the movie, but I mean there's no movie on the planet that I would spend thirty dollars on. I mean there isn't. There's just no movie yeah. on the planet that I would spend thirty dollars on. Not when I know that it'll come out eventually. Dude, how long did it take for me to watch Punisher and Daredevil? You think I don't have patience yeah. with, with this kind of content? That's right. I'll wait, dude. I'll wait. Yeah. I'll watch that shit three years from now. I don't, get, I don't give a fuck. Like, I want to be able to talk about it, but I'm also like, not for $30? Yeah. What do you think you got? Just a minute. What do you think you got? Just Yeah. Not doing that. Mm-mm. I don't know. What about you? Are you gonna, Are you going to buy it? You sound like you're gonna buy it. I feel like you're kind of sounding like a corporate shill. I'll wait for reviews. That's what I'll say. Uh, uh-huh. if reviews really well, maybe. Well, then I'll just come to your place. You'll have to pay me. I'll I'll bring some food. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. And then some we'll have a movie souls. night. We'll have a night of it. Ah, that's kind of racist. <laughs> no, it's a theme. It's a theme. Is that what it is? Yes. It's a New theme. York Chinese food is the theme yeah. to go along with Mulan. Yeah. 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 Shush. See, I'm usually the one saying fucked up shit. Uh, I leave it to you. <laughs> You're well, <laughs> well, we'll <clears throat> I mean, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Um, what's interesting, and and you know, this will be it. We'll get the fuck out of here. But what's interesting is what this means for movies going forward, right? Because we've still got Tenet and um, Black Widow is supposed to be coming out, yeah. and they're experimenting with doing the same thing with Black Widow. That's, yeah, people have been saying, well, do you pay 30 bucks <laughs> to see Black Widow as opposed to Mulan, which is an interesting conversation. That is a whole other conversation to have, and yeah. maybe we'll have it. We'll see what happens with what people are willing to spend their money on. I guarantee it uh, It has a lot to do with how Mulan ends up. Yeah. How successful that is. <laughs> Which I get the feeling is going to be really successful. I just feel like people are going to shell the money out for that. I th- I think you know they were they were saying that the um, movie industry was keeping a close eye on what's going to happen with Tenet and how studios are going to handle that, but they keep pushing that movie back. So yeah. I think now studios are looking at Disney and going, okay, well, if this is the next best thing, then how much money are they going to recoup on this? Yeah. How much are they going to lose? How much do we need to spend? to make a movie and make money on said movie. And <clears throat> where do we go from here? Basically. And there, I mean, the, the first experiment of this was trolls when it came out and people they keep fucking out. saying trolls. They bought trolls. <laughs> they bought trolls. People did, bought trolls. Did. <laughs> they did. I'm sorry. <laughs> they did. It's a fact. People bought trolls. So uh, that so was did, a so it did well. It did great, yeah. From from what everybody says, it did great. And, you know, I guarantee it's because parents were there like, all right, our kids are out of school. What do we do? Yeah. We buy trolls and let them watch trolls. Yeah. So. There's a bunch of movies that popped up on Amazon Prime, too, that I was like, where do these come from? And it's all these movies that were supposed to come out in theaters or came out in theaters right when the pandemic hit and they were like, ah, oh, yeah. fuck. Quickly so they put them on. Into, yeah. Yeah, streaming. Yeah. 
This is supposed to be Joseph Gordon-Levitt's year, by the way. Really? Yeah, this was supposed to be it, man. He has like three movies out. And like all of them. Well, one's a Netflix movie, so that was on purpose. But then there's that movie where he plays the pilot that gets uh, hijacked, that plane. I think it's called 1400 or something. Mm. I don't know. It's on Amazon Prime. And apparently he, 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 he crushes it. But Really? It's oh, JGL, sure you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So big fans. I'm not surprised. Not surprised. So I don't know. <clears throat> it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Um when does Mulan come out? That's a great question. We gotta be ready with these press kits. Unfortunately, nobody knows. Oh, so there's still no um I'm official sure. release. There's, oh. a, there's a date. I just don't know <laughs> it. <laughs> You fucking asshole. <laughs> well, if only okay. there were a way for us to know. It was supposed to come out in March. That's crazy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you know, the oh, other day I was thinking about Black Widow. And I was like, I wonder how Black Widow did. And then I Googled it and I was like, oh, it still hasn't come out. No. And I, and I thought... I thought that it was dog shit because no one talked about it. And I was like, that sucks. You know, they're trying to, they finally give her a standalone movie and then it sucks. And then I looked it up and I was like, no, no one even, no one's seen it yet. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, September 4th. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess in a couple of weeks we'll find out if it, if this was all worth it. Yeah. But until then, let's review these beers, friendo. Let's do it. So, uh, did you get into any of the other? I mean, we've just been. I, yeah, I took I took basically baby sips of the rest of them. Uh, I will tell you, it didn't really matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's all seltzer, baby. So, <clears throat> th- no, there's nothing craft about it. Nothing stood out no. in the flavor profile. No, nothing. No, wow, no, this was very disappointing. Uh, what I will say is like, and this is I'm not saying. I'm not saying this in a good way. These taste waterier. Oh, then, then what? Corona and the Bud Light ones, and yeah, then all your mainstream Trulies and, and all White Claws. White Claw, yeah, yeah. Um, it's fine. You know what we have to do, right? Seltzer. You know what we have to do. Like a panel of seltzers. Yeah, man. This is the one beer and podcast. We have to do. We just have. We have to. I think it's yeah. our civic duty. I think it is too. Yeah. Yeah. We can, we can even maybe do like a, a blind taste test to really get yeah. the unadulterated. Well, we did that with the, uh, with all the, the, the light uh, beers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and now it's, and now it's time for another blind taste test. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I will say these, they're refreshing. I mean, they, they wouldn't be bad on the beach or by the pool. Um, very crisp, but flavor wise, <clears throat> I, I honestly, I picked these up because what's the one thing we say about Funky Buddha all the time? They're, they go really far with their flavors. Correct. So I was hoping that this would be the time that they, they actually, like, that thing we usually count as a negative would work in their favor. Right, 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 right. And it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's still not enough flavor in these things. I don't know. Funky Buddha can't win for losing, bro. <laughs> but I will say out of the out of the variety pack so far, I think my favorite is probably the pink grapefruit. Interesting. Um, Cause I just feel like, you know, with the other ones, this has been a thing for me with a lot of seltzers is that I I my my flavor profile, I tend to like the ones that are supposed to be more sour or tart. Yeah. I feel like that's easier to do with a seltzer when you're not trying to add too many calories. Right. The ones that are supposed to be super sweet tend to come off like not as good or the flavor's off or it tastes like it's not flavorful enough. Yeah. So I think that's what's going on with this. Like it's crisp. It's tart. It's okay. It's fine. These aren't bad. I'm I'm not saying they're bad as far as seltzers go, but just, you know, I was expecting a bit more from a premium (laughs) hard seltzer. Yeah. But no, but no, no, no bullshit though. It's, it's, you know, a craft beer stepping into that, that, that game. And we've been talking to, you know, uh, well, we've had, we've had discussions with Hourglass, for instance, about hard water or hard seltzer and, and what it means for the industry and all of these companies that are like, oh, we, we got to make one of those. We got to get into that game. So to see a craft 
craft beer company do that and yet this is still kind of you know just being it's, another one of them yeah, yeah. it's disappointing you know, I, I i will walk back my my favorite after now tasting all of them again side by side <laughs> um it's no longer the grapefruit but actually the mango guava all right here um at least they went with more interesting flavors yeah even even if they didn't uh commit fully it's still yeah, this, better this, than this, strawberry lemon lime correct you know this has a bit more flavor to it so i'll give this one the uh, the nod um as far as rating go i'll probably just it looks like a it's a you know it's a it's a low three <laughs> it's it's serviceable it's fine like yeah that's what it is but it's, i i wouldn't go out of my way for it all right a a low serviceable three yeah soft three <laughs> for the funky buddha guava mango that's right mango guava actually. mango guava premium, premium hard premium seltzer hard. the lagunitas hazy wonder is a hazy ipa from lagunitas and it is disappointing i uh i um i don't know what i was expecting from it um, but I know, that, but I really like Lagunitas as a, as a, as a beer company. They're, yeah. you know, a little something, something's delicious. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Hey, how about you weigh in? You had, you had some of this. Oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, peanut gallery speaks up. Oh God. Okay. Well, as long as you, you, I mean, black people are not a monolith. We can disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Biden, Kanye Joe West. Biden. Come on, Joe we can, Biden. We can disagree. <laughs> What'd you think? Um, what, did you not like it? No, I don't like it. You don't like it at all? Mm-mm. Well, can I have one? No, 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 I'm going to finish it because I'm an alcoholic, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to like it, but I'm going to finish it. Yeah. It's, it's because it's kind of like, I don't know, it has like that, ha- like the hazy beers. It almost, you can almost taste like that softness to an IPA. Yeah, and that's. It's, so it's not as like bitey. Yeah. You know. So can you like, you can hear her right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear. I can talk louder. We don't need to. Talk please louder. don't. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean, it went down easy. I can definitely drink things at any time. Like I, I genuinely do like these. Interesting. Yeah. So. Hmm. I guess. I guess I was looking at it incorrectly. <sighs> okay. Because that was my issue with it. It was too too soft. Too it smooth. was just empty to me. Yeah. I drank yeah. it and I was just like, I, I am empty. I'm empty on the inside, and it didn't do anything to feel fill any voids. It really didn't. It's it's flavorless. Okay. I'm gonna give it a three. Okay. Pretty, pretty run of the mill episode here. Yeah, it's a little. Yeah. That's too That's okay. bad. They can't all be fives. It, yeah, they, yeah, it happens. It Come happens. On. This is yeah. these. It's it's real. It's real. Yeah. You know. So all right. there you go. A three for the Funky Buddha Hard's Premium Hard Seltzers, and a three for the Lagunitas Hazy Wonder. What would you give it? Bottle caps. Four three point five. Three point five. Okay, so yeah. she didn't like. It wasn't like, you know, <laughs> superior, but it was definitely like easy drinking. Right. You know? Right. Okay. Right. All right. Think we got it? I think we got it. Well, then that means this has been the One Baron Podcast for myself, Marco Dupa, for Adam Obesius Rodriguez. Yeah, boy. Way. And for a special guest, Naladi Dupa. As always. Brr, 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 brr. Thank you guys for listening. Drink delicious beer and have a beautiful evening. We love you. All right.